And I want to start and talk about our immune system. And I want you to know that I didn't start to teach about the immune system because of COVID-19, although now it's more relevant than ever. I started to teach about the immune system in the early 80s because I had many clients with rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease, where the immune system creates inflammation and attacks the cartilage. What I want to say is that uh, the immune system uh, can be very strong. I mean, these days we think about body strength as few extra muscles. Well, I met some bouncers, bar bouncers, that nobody could fight with. 20 years later, you can't even hug them because they're so tight and they feel so bad. And the point is, muscular strength is one form of strength. Neurological strength is another form of strength. And immune strength is another form of strength. So here's what we hear. You could be, you could have no symptoms of COVID-19, but you could transfer it to other people. Let's start with this. Congratulations that you have no symptoms with COVID-19. It means your immune system is fantastic. And that is great. We should be proud if our blood pressure is good. We should be proud if our nervous system works well, we should be proud if our immune system works well. Why is strength only a few more biceps and a little bit different shape? That is not real strength. That is strength for the moment and not for life. So to begin with, appreciate when the immune system works well. I want to say something else. If we will work on having better immune system, we may uh, shorten or prevent the crisis. Now, let me tell you something. What I'm saying now is me, the School for Self-Healing and Mayor Schneider. Don't hold your teacher responsible for what I'm saying. Don't hold State University responsible for what I'm saying. But we need a revolution. We need to start to think about strengthening our and everybody's immune system. So there are a few ways of doing it. To begin with, as you know, we have two elements uh, to the immune system. And this is, oh, we're more than that. The skin is a part of the immune system. It rejects all kinds of foreign substances. And we have other things uh, that help our immune system, and I won't bring it up. But the most known one are the three white blood cells, which you probably could read in all biology book, the uh, leukocytes, right? The uh, neutrophil, eosinophil, and the uh, the uh, other phagocytes that we have, and we have the two, uh, uh, we have the two lim lymph cells, which are the B cells and the T cells. So basically, the eosinophil uh, is the most important uh, part of this immune system, in my opinion. There's two kinds of immune system. The lymph is kind of old. It's between five and 20 years, but the blood is being formed all the time. And so it's being formed in the bones. It's being also uh, increased often in the spleen. And what we need is, uh, if you think about it, if a gang comes to your, uh, to your neighborhood, you want police patrol to ensure your safety. We need a good patrol. And how do we get it? We allow the immune system to work as good as possible. So the eosinophil and the basophil really need to do the work because the neutrophil are very good with bacteria. But we need, uh, uh, we need the immune system to destroy those invaders. Otherwise, it fights with them so much that it creates inflammation and eventually destroys the lung. It's the immune system that destroys the lung out of this fight. The virus needs us, but we don't need the virus. That's what happens. So it comes to rob us from our, from, our life, from our life. So here is my goal. If this become viral, maybe instead of 17 to 20% who have no symptoms, we'll have 40% with no symptoms. Maybe instead of 60% people with mild to severe symptoms, but not critical, we'll have about 80% uh, of those. And we'll have, and we'll have uh, or let's say 60% of those, and we'll have 10% or 5% 
who will really need medical care and maybe 1% under the ventilator. We do that and we solve the problem and maybe the, the epidemiologist will need to find another uh, way to pay their rent and uh, mortgage. So the point is, we want to strengthen our body. And we want to strengthen, first of all, our circulation. So if you want uh, to strengthen your circulation, tap on your whole body, any way you can. I have a wonderful ball, which is kind of a bunger. I hit myself beautifully with this because it's a good, uh, nice uh, ball that is moving in this way and I can hit myself very nicely. So tap and tap and tap and improve your circulation and tap on your chest where the thymus gland is. Massage your neck very gently. Massage your head nicely and tap on your back and interlace your fingers and move the uh, arms in rotating motion and tap nicely on your legs and then lie down and um, Lars, I want you to see that I'm doing it correctly. Lie down. So what you may want to try to do, I'll try to give the verbal instructions as well. And so you may want to lie on your floor for a moment or a mat and do a few of these exercises. And what happens is as you lie on your back, Mayor is then massaging his, his, his left leg. He uses the sole of his foot to massage his right leg. Please speak loudly, Mayor. So I'm massaging the inside of my right leg all the way to my pelvis, the front and the outside. I do the same thing here. So basically you're not doing this mechanically, you're doing it mechanically and bringing your passive attention to those places where you're touching, correct? Right, I'm rotating my other leg. So if with my right leg, I massage the left leg, can you see my leg or no? Yes, they can, but not if they're lying on the floor. Okay. So we massage all the way. So first of all, the inside, then the middle, then the outside, yeah? And now it's nice if you lie on the floor to roll from side to side for a moment. And by the way, at home, do much more of that. And boy, we have so many more exercises, like pull the leg and then pull the leg and then turn to your side and sit up and rub your feet so rub now your you're feet. sitting up you put your two soles together and rub each other's feet Perfect. the soles to each other this is the one exercise where i prefer that you wear socks because they make it smoother so rub your feet real warm and massage your legs with your arms. So uh, stand up for a moment, I'll talk to you, and then we'll lie down again on the blankets or yoga mats. So I just want you to understand something. We live unnatural life, and the unnatural life is that we live with a, a autonomic nervous system that is built for the jungle but, um, but we live in modern time. In the jungle, it was simple. You saw a tiger. The tiger may want to eat you. You either ran away or you fought the tiger or sometimes you froze like zebras freeze when they see lions coming their way. And then the lions do not want to eat um, corpses, so they leave, and then the zebras would stand and would shake for three hours because all of those hormones would come in. So what happens if you saw a tiger, a few things would happen to you. Your pupils would dilate, even if it's daytime, because you wanted to see all your environment. The kidneys would stop filtering, because what point is that? The tiger is about to eat you. you uh, your uh, digestion would stop, you don't want to spend energy there. You're about to be digested yourself. And your adrenal gland would work very hard because you would, uh, you would secrete norepinephrine. It used to be called noradrenaline. 
that will get your heart to beat five times as fast. So you'd be able to get a lot of blood away from the skin, away from the internal organs and to your muscles. <clears throat> and then you would fight. The immune system would stop working because what point for the immune system to work? The immune system would stop working because what do you care if you die from cancer a year from now? A tiger is about to eat you right now. Here's what happens to us. We don't have a tiger, but what we have right now is prolonged things. Lawyers, courts, politics, death in the family, unhappiness, economical stress. Who doesn't know about it these days? All that is going on in our life right now, and it's all long. So what happens is we have this response, but we don't respond to it physically. We don't fight, we don't fly, and we don't shake all of a sudden. That's why the solution is made out of two, like the palming that we did and a lot of the biofeedback wonderful work that Eric is doing with you is there to relax you. But then you can also build up tension. And when the, you build up the tension, and then the tension will drop. So let's start with this. Put three fingers together. You know, many people who have strokes cannot open their uh, uh, thumb. So this is a very instinctive thing, primitive. You put them together. And while I always want you to relax, not now, inhale and exhale. So for example, as you stand up, okay, bend down all the way as much as you can bend, inhale, exhale, and move your abdomen forwards and backwards. Not your back, just the abdomen forwards and backwards. Now inhale, exhale, tighten your anus as hard as you can. As hard as you can, as hard as you can. Relax, inhale. So when you're saying that, what you're saying is that when you're exhaling, you're pulling your abdomen in and you're squeezing your, you're bringing your anus almost upward and tightening it at the same time to bring the whole pelvic floor up. Exactly. And when you inhale, you allow it all to relax. So in a way, you're allowing a larger movement of the diaphragm, eventually of the abdomen to expand and to to exactly. come back again and the diaphragm upon the inhalation can go further down but and upon the exhalation goes further up. But you keep bending. So you keep bending and inhale and exhale. Now, tighten your bladder real hard. Lift that bladder, tighten it, tighten it, tighten it. Relax. Inhale. See if you can tighten your anus a bit more right now. And now see how much more you can bend. And slowly stand up. So now all of us, let's lie on the floor for a moment. Again, for two times, just roll from side to side to get used to the floor. And now, put your thumb against three fingers. Normally, I want you to inhale and exhale through your nose, but not now. Now, I want you to inhale from your nose and exhale like a choo-choo train from your mouth. Inhale and exhale. Do you want to exhale almost like a staccato or just for a small fricative, such as the sound like shh or ch -ch 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 -ch. Both are good. And now, lift your legs up without air, but not much up, just a little bit up. So you can really feel your abdominal muscles, providing you don't have a hernia. If you have a hernia, don't do that. Imagine it. But if you don't have a hernia, please lift and move your legs in rotating motion. Now bend your legs. Put your thumb against three fingers. Again, remember, we're building stress to its limit. Inhale. 
Squeeze your three fingers together and exhale. Shh. Shh. Heart. Shh. Stay with no air. Tighten your bladder. Tighten your bladder real hard as if you're about to go to the bathroom. Tighten. Relax. Tighten. Relax. Tighten. Relax. Inhale. Exhale. Shh. Men, lift your legs up. Women, tighten your vagina as hard as you can. As hard as you can. As hard as you can. And then keep the legs up, but not all the way up. Otherwise, you're not making the right effort. Now bend your knees and relax. Inhale. Exhale. Tighten your anus as hard as you can. Tighten your anus. As hard as you can, as if you're holding yourself from going to the bathroom, like an uncomfortable situation. Tighten, tighten, tighten. Relax. Now inhale. Keep there in and move the abdomen up and down 10 times. Don't leave the back, just the navel, up and down. So, so you're up. doing this without exhaling. You just close the glottis and you move it up back and forth, right? Exactly. To the ceiling, to the floor, to the ceiling, to the floor, to the ceiling, to the floor, to the ceiling, exhale. Shh. Stay with no air and move the abdomen up and down, up and down, up and down. Almost feel as if the navel is about to touch the lower back, which is not true anatomically, but just think that. And then up, and then down, and then up, and then down, and then up. Now. Breathe in, and again, breathe out. Now, push on the bladder as if you're about to pee. Push, 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 as hard as you can. Push, push, that's why I sent you to the bathroom, yeah? Push, 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 relax. Inhale. Don't exhale, puff your cheeks and keep the air in your mouth. Puff the cheeks and keep the air in your mouth. And now exhale. Now, men, lift your legs up. Women, tighten your vagina. Uh, sorry, push on your vagina all you can, all you can, all you can. Push, push. Move the legs in the turning motion. And now bend, inhale, exhale. Think that for five days you didn't do number two and now you ate all the fibers. Try very hard, push, 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 push. Again, inhale and exhale. Push, push, push. Wonderful. Again, roll from side to side and see how easy it is to do it now. Because you loosen all of your internal organs. So I want to spend just a minute or two to explain to you what we did. We built the tension to its limit. We basically did the most primitive things that the person does when the person is under tremendous stress. We did that. And the result is that uh, we allowed our tension to live. And these days, there's so much tension with people losing jobs, with uh, families hoping for money they don't have right now, in spite of the government. Uh, lending us money and giving us money, it still is not the same as working. And there are so many ways to be tense in life. And what we did now is we physically, I will never forget that once I had, a, I had 19 students in one class and 18 of them told me, I'm taking your class. It was an advanced class because I did all the psychological work, but my body still, still feels the tension. So what you did is you build up that stress 
and then let that stress drop, like getting off a mountain. And now there is balance between your two uh, parts of the autonomic nervous system, the fight and flight, and the active one, which is the sympathetic, and the parasympathetic. That balance helps your internal organs, helps your heart, but it very much helps your immune system. It takes away the blockage from your immune system. I know it because I work on many people with rheumatoid arthritis, and after doing this, they responded much better to the exercise I've given them. I really feel that if people will do enough of that and also be in the dark at night, as Eric was saying, be in the sun in the daytime. I don't know who is the stupid person who told us to be indoors. I can tell you, I'm, I'm practicing social distancing. So thank God all those people, unfortunately, sit in their houses with curtains drawn, don't even look outside. So the sidewalks are mine in the outer sunset. Now that people start to walk, if somebody walks in one sidewalk, I walk in the other one. And if I'm in the park, I make sure that I'm not just two, uh, six feet away from them uh, or two meters. I'm about three meters or nine feet away from them. I make sure that I'm far away from everyone. Even if I have to run in the ocean, and today I ran in the ocean and ran in the water to make sure I don't engage with anyone because everybody else is afraid to run in the cold water. So distancing, washing hands, I completely agree with everything. But Feeling incapable, feeling vulnerable, that's the worst you can do for yourself. Instead, doing exercises to balance your autonomic nervous system that affects all the hormonal system that you have and will allow the white blood cells to recognize any virus, including the COVID-19 that unfortunately came to us because we killed so many wild animals and some people eat wild animals. That's something we should never be doing. It, by the way, it's, the Bible was against it, which is very interesting. But we did that. So now we have that unknown virus, and that's the biggest problem. But even when they'll find um, a, a vaccine against it, it's going to be most likely, it could be something else, but most likely it's either going to be an uh, evolved protein or the same virus in small quantity she so can respond to it. So the point is, you want to strengthen your system and to say to yourself, I have a strong system. You know, I heard today from someone that a person came with a cancer that a surgeon thought is operable. When he opened his abdomen and saw uh, the cancer, he said it's unoperable, closed the abdomen, sent the person home, thought he will die. Well, the person saw him four years later, pretty healthy, and he said, your surgery saved me. So just because he believed in that, it saved him. Now the president believes in a drug, which is unproven to the doctors. The fact that he believes in it will make it work to some extent with many clients. I prefer we believe in some homeopathy that is not as harmful and doesn't have that many side effects. But let's go back to ourselves. Our faith in ourselves, our belief in ourselves, our strong capacity to balance ourselves is our key for having a good immune system. And Mayor? If, yeah, good. No, I, I, I think in a total support, it is the question we can ask, and I really want to thank you for making that point, that there are things we can do to mobilize our immune system. And, and there are many factors which don't mobilize. There are many factors which do. The, but the exercise you gave, for example, are ways by which you improve the whole lymph circulation, the lower abdomen, you improve the circulation, and also the breathing pattern you did was a way to increase the heart rate, that sympathetic activation, and then the, when you did the very slow exhalation to decrease the heart rate, which is a traditional, which is a very powerful measure to bring autonomic balance back and strength. And I would really support that perspective. And so I really want to thank you so much for, for bringing the, these two pieces to the class. One, a, rem a remembrance that we are an organism based in our evolutionary history. We need to remember that and we need to live in harmony with that. And, and out of that specifically, there are many things we can do 
in the narrow part for our vision because we have so abused in some sense our vision or we've been so seduced by the screens that all we do is we live in a narrow visual world and you really reminded us there are many great strategies to do to, to mobilize our health and equally is true for our immune system. And I, and before we finish, I thought I was going to show maybe two or three slides for an instance to summarize that. Wonderful. Okay, let me pull those up for a moment where they are. Let me get them. It will take me one sec to get my computer all lined up here. And here I think we are almost. We'll start at this slide set here. And what you can all see for a moment is that for those who want to know more about Mayor Schneider's work, he, is, he goes to the School of Self-Healing, et cetera. And then uh, it's the School of Self-Healing, which is in San Francisco. His email is www.self-healing.org. I mean, he has multiple techniques and his books are truly remarkable, pragmatic. They really are pragmatic about what you can do. It reminded me your talk that this weekend we wrote a little blog asking what are some factors by which you can optimize your immune system. And so I thought I was gonna summarize those for everybody. And this comes from the research. I think you would totally agree. There are many more factors, but remember, get adequate sleep. You need sleep because sleep is when you restore. It increases immune competence. Stress reduction is critical. If you learning many stress management techniques, whether it's mindfulness, meditation, progressive relaxation, learning the tightness and letting go on the slower breathing. The part of hope and optimism. You gave the example of the cancer patient. It's absolutely true. If you're hopeful, your, your immune system becomes more competent. It's not the only thing. And if you really get sick, I really do respirate. And if you get pneumonia, I respirate antibiotics. And I respirate the respirators and all that, the best medical care. But let's try to avoid being there. Exercise is critical. And I know you, do, you cited that and used that by walking on the on ocean beach in the water, doing daily exercise. It really moves your, your, your whole circulation. You know, as people would say, is rest rusts. However, exercise should not be that too exhaustion. Eat lots of fruits and veggies. They have a lot of the flavonoids, which really help the immune system function perfectly. There's data to support that if every so often you do a short weekly fast, that means for 16 hours continuously, you don't eat anything that seems to enhance immune function. Then there are some vitamins that are associated with elderly people uh, where there are controlled studies. So you take people in convalescent homes, old people, older people, you, you give them either the, the vitamin or a placebo, and then they know that those who get a low dose of vitamin D, you know, have fewer upper respiratory infections. Ideally, vitamin D you can get by going in the sun. It's much better. Equally, vitamin E, a very low dose, about 200 international units, seems to enhance uh, the, uh, the adaptive arm of the immune system. These are the two different arms. Uh, and also to reduce upper respiratory infections while having a very low dose of zinc will tend to seem to reduce viral infections, but too much tends to suppress it. There's a possibility that vitamin C seems to be helpful and then especially a lots of fresh air because if you have, if you're outside in fresh air, the concentration of the viruses, if you are exposed, are reduced. There's a very good suggestion now that the sick, that if at least one way, one factor of getting mild or very severely sick is not just only the status of your immune system, it's also how big was that initial dose of the virus you got. If you got a very small dose, it's almost like a natural vaccination. So if you got a few of the viruses coming into you proportionally, they will start multiplying, but, be, but however, they're very few. So they take a while to really become a storm. And in that time, your body's immune system can be activated if it is capable to do that, to develop its own antibodies and get rid of it. On the other hand, if you are inhaling massive numbers of these all the time, then you're overwhelmed and that tends to be associated with much more serious 
uh, versions of the disease. And people have studied this now by counting the viral concentrations of people who are not yet sick, and it seems to be predictive of who will get very seriously sick. Uh, there are also factors many of us do which that weaken our immune system. You know, and these are all well known. There's nothing new about these. If you're doing any of those, really it's worthwhile to say change. Smoking, e-cigarettes, any pulmonary irritant will make the lungs more vulnerable. Recycled air probably makes it worse because instead of getting rid of the bacteria or viruses in the building, it keeps circulating it around. It's almost like the Legionnaire's disease model. Uh, and this is probably the reason why if you look at children, historically, when Mayer was a little boy or I was a little boy, before there were vaccines and you got childhood illnesses, but there was the most interesting observation. If the child by accident got infected in the playground by another child who was, who was either a carrier or was sick, the child would go home, would get sick, but that version of the sickness often was very mild. On the other hand, that sick child's brothers and sisters would often get a very severe version of the same illness. And again, the major reason was that the sick child was continually emitting the viruses. And if you now sleep in the same room, you're not only getting a higher dosage in, but also for a much longer time. And when you're outside, you only get a small dosage often over a short period of time. Uh, so, Avoid the recycled air. Then our emotional state you alluded to, that's hopelessness or frustration or anything else. All those are immune and has. Uh, ask yourself, uh, when the world gives me lemons, how can I search to make lemonade? Excessive exercise, as I already said, is exhaustion. That's exhaustion of work. And that may be one co-factor where some of the healthcare professionals are now coming down. They both have too many viral particles coming in and total exhaustion. Then we know that obesity, excessive food intake is linked to lowering immune competence, consuming alcohol, sugars, and simple heart carbohydrates, and chronic stress. There are many, many others, but at least for now, I'll let that be. And so finally, I want to thank so Mayor. Can I, can, I, can I add something to what you sure. said? There is, uh, we need to sleep well also. Yes. Not just sleep long, but sleep well. Pay attention that in New York, uh, many, many people got the COVID-19 and pretty badly. New York, especially Manhattan, is a place where the light does not turn off, not at night. And people were even resistant when I told them to have double curtains. They said, it's not common in Manhattan. They like that light at night. No, we want to be in the dark at night and in the light in the daytime to follow nature, that's so important. And I want to say one more thing. Everything that Eric said, I agree with. Stop smoking, anything that you smoke. This is the time to make those changes. It's gonna make your life so much better. And the last but not least, I'm not very good with technology, but I'm sure that some of you, especially the young ones are very good. Let's talk about another virus. Make this lecture that I gave viral. Make sure that everybody hears it. The chart that Eric gave and my exercises, let's hope that that's going to lead to the fact that the epidemiologists will have less clients and we can all go back to work. Well, thank Mayor, you. I want to thank you very much for your presentation. And so thank you.